Is there really, is there a truly reality out there that humans could really know? It's an age old battle between realists and absolutists. God is not great, how religion ruins everything. And yet it's utterly and totally ridiculous. We need to live for something beyond ourselves. I want to start out with a short poem by the Russian Anna Akhmatova. Everything is plundered, betrayed, sold. Death's great black wing scrapes the air. Misery gnaws to the bone. Why then do we not despair? By day, from the surrounding woods, cherries blow summer into town. At night, the deep transparent skies glitter with new galaxies. And the miraculous comes so close to the ruined dirty houses, something not known to anyone at all, but wild in our breaths for centuries. You know, I love that poem. And it's got something in there that I really would like to explore because I think she's saying something that we all need just to think about and comprehend what what she's trying to say with these words. Look at how her poem begins. Everything is plundered, betrayed, sold. Everything is ruined, she's saying. Nothing is left untouched. You know, she wrote this in 1921, not long after the communists took over and controlled every aspect of life. And the communists pretty much ruined everything as well, everything that they touch, you know, especially her life as well. Notice the images, the words she used, plundered, betrayed, sold. You get the idea not only of a physical destruction, but of a moral one as well. All things betrayed, sold, nothing was sacred, nothing was off limits. So she goes, everything is plundered, betrayed, sold. Death's great black wing scraped the air. Death's great black wing, wow. That's a powerful image. And of course, she's obvious she's talking about the reality of death, you know, which, the Russian, which, which during the Russian Revolution was even more real than before, more prevalent than ever. The violence and brutality of the Soviet you know, Revolution left untold numbers dead, even at that time. Little did she know that you know, what was coming once Lenin died and Stalin got in the picture. You know, death's great black wing was going to do a lot more scraping than it had already done. Death, death betrayal, plunder. It wasn't a pretty picture, to be sure. Look what she writes. Everything is plundered, betrayed, sold. Death's great black wing scraped the air. Misery gnaws to the bone. Another powerful image of bleakness, of suffering, of pain. Misery even to the bone. This is a woman, who, a despairing woman. And again, if you really knew the story of her life, we don't have time to get into it now, you would understand why. She had plenty of reasons, plenty of reasons to feel sorrow. But look what comes next. Let me read this again. Everything is plundered, betrayed, sold. Death black wing scrapes the air. Misery gnaws to the bone. Why then do we not despair? And what does she write? By day, from the surrounding woods, cherries blow summer into town. At night, the deep transparent skies glitter with new galaxies. And their miraculous comes so close to the dirty, ruined houses. Something not known to anyone at all, but wild in our breast for centuries. What is she saying here? Amid all this suffering, all this horror, all this carnage, she's expressing hope. She's seeing something deeper, something beyond what appears on the surface of reality. She's looking deeper at the world, deeper at reality, deeper than what human beings normally doing. In other words, amid all the pain, all the suffering, what does she see? You know, she sees cherries blowing summer into town. 
What a beautiful image. What a beautiful metaphor. In its own subtle way, it carries something wonderful, something hopeful amid all the plunder. She's seeing something in nature, something grander and deeper and more lasting than the foibles and lies and sorrows of humanity. And at night, she looks up into the deep, transparent skies. It's almost like she's looking She's looking beyond what the world itself offers. She's looking beyond Lenin, beyond the Cheka, beyond politics. By day from the surrounding woods, cherries blow summer into town. At night, the deep transparent skies glitter with new galaxies. New galaxies? I mean, think about that. You can't look up at the sky and see our own galaxy, or at least much of it, much less the glitter of new ones. But see, again, she's projecting. She's projecting beyond the immediate, the immediate scraping of the the air. She's projecting beyond what she sees, as if what she sees is only a symbol for so much more that's out there. She sees in the nearby woods cherries blowing summer into town. And when she looks up at night, she sees the deep the transparent sky she sees in them, which burn overhead on clear nights. She sees new galaxies. In other words, she looks up and she sees the hope of renewal, of a chance to start over, of something new and better and different than what the world offers. It's how interesting that even somebody amidst so much suffering could see something that gave her hope. How interesting amid the worst of situations, she hadn't given up in complete despair. She was believing in something beyond what was immediately before her. And her the last paragraph, the last stanza, and the miraculous comes so close to the ruined, dirty houses. Something not known to anyone at all, but wild in our breasts for centuries. Something not known maybe not known like the Pythagorean theorem or known like the date of Napoleon's death. It's funny, kind of makes me think of the painter Wilhelm de Kooning, who once was out in the woods at night, you know, spent most of his life in New York City, but was out in the woods one night and the the sky was so full of stars he'd never seen it before, living in New York. And he looked up at that and he just turned around and said, let's get out of here. He says, the universe gives me the creeps. And yet look at the contrast now between Akhmatova. She looked up and she saw something unspoken, something you can't rationalize, and then it's there. She said, it's wild in our breasts. But what? What was this hope that she sensed, this thing that she felt wild inside her? You know, it was interesting. The atheist John Paul Sartre on his deathbed supposedly uttered, I die in hope, I die in hope. And that's fine. I'm glad Sartre was thought he could die in hope. But then supposedly, right after he said that, I die in hope, I die in hope, supposedly he got this painful look on his face and then said, but hope needs a foundation. And I wonder what foundation Sartre had. You wouldn't, notice what, you wouldn't know of anyone by reading his writings. But it's interesting because here's Akhmatova, who had a much harder life than Jean-Paul Sartre ever did. And Anna Akhmatova, in the midst of the despair, in the midst of this horrible despair of her life, she expressed a hope, and that's fine, but a hope based on what? If the grave's the final resting place and there's nothing beyond it, then when death's great black wing scrapes the air, there's nothing left to breathe, there's nothing left to have hope at all. You know, it's one thing, you know, it's one thing to have this hope wild in your breast for centuries, this unspoken thing that she talked about. But unless that's something beyond what this world offers, unless there's something beyond it, then what is this hope? Nothing but heartburn. And yet somehow she had this hope. I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was she saw. Was it her faith in God? Was it something beyond? I really don't know what it was. And see, in the end, it's one thing to have hope. It's one thing to have hope, but I guess maybe, I don't know, what's the worst thing not having hope? Or to have hope in a false hope, to have hope in something that can't answer 
the questions for you. I really don't know what it was she found that gave her that hope. It obviously had to be something beyond just this world and what this world offered. She saw intimations of it in the cherries blowing summer into town or looking up at the sky and seeing the new galaxies. It was something unspoken and wild in their breasts for centuries, which means it wasn't just her alone. Others she knew had it as well. And I guess the ultimate question is, what is that hope? Can we have that hope? Or is it just something silly and sentimental, but ultimately meaningless in the end?